Gentlemen, it's great to see all of you again, and congratulations on a year in the Tea Party business. I think I've been here from pretty much the beginning and off and on as much as I could, uh, although since about the 3rd of November, the day after the election, uh, my attendance has dropped off somewhat as I've uh, concentrated on other parts. Well, um, when I woke up the day after the election, I said to myself, okay, what are you going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> and had to start rebuilding from that point. And in some level, we all did. Um, I have, since that time, gone back to my roots as a lifelong Republican. I could lecture you for a long time, very interestingly, on the core values of the Republican Party. If you're not, I won't. But the fact of the matter is that, like many organizations, those core values aren't really easy to find in the present execution of the Republican Party. And so one of the things I've always tried to do is say, uh, hey guys, if it says here in the book that we're about individual responsibility and individual authority and small government and stuff like that, don't we have to do it once in a while? <laughs> and that's what I have sort of been trying to do um, uh, from, the, from that perspective. Since the election, I have become the chair of the North Kingstown Republican Town Committee. Uh, resuming that post as I, as I had it in 2004. Um, we are a fairly energized group and we are concentrating on local issues. I heard somebody mention the magic word over here before windmills. I now know a lot more about windmills than I ever thought I would when I woke up that morning, the 3rd of November. But the fact of the matter is that what I am going to do is stay part of the public discourse stay involved in trying to do the right thing. And I hope in my campaign for Congress, I, I defined at least at some level what I thought the right thing was. I kept coming here to the Johnson Tea Party because I believe, as you do, that you have defined what the right thing to do is. And unless and until we take our government back and make it responsive to us, certainly in fiscal concerns, if nothing else, I mean, I personally believe we should be guided morally. But all of that's highfalutin talk if you've got no money. And we are right on the verge of not having that. I mean, people talk about, well, you know, the bad Republicans are going to throw all the old folks out the street. And I am one of the old folks. I'm going to throw people out in the street who don't do their accounting correctly. Because what's going to happen is not that we're going to pass a restricted budget. What's going to happen is the checks are going to start to bounce. Because this, the, the budgets that we have, both at the state and the federal level, are fantasies compared to what's actually going to happen. And if your first indication of a problem is when you flip the light switch and the lights don't come on, you've waited way too long to take management steps. And so that's the case that all of us have to face. Now, I was speaking to Kathy earlier. Kathy, uh, like many of you in the room, was a great supporter of mine in uh, the uh, campaign, and I thank her and all of you for everything you've done. But uh, she said, I'm overwhelmed. You know, what, what, I just, look at everything that's wrong. What are we going to do? Well, no one of us is going to do it all. And so what I have done is focused on the town of North Kingstown. Uh, what I have done is started to look at town council and school committee races in my town. I'm working with the chairs uh, caucus, since I'm one of the 39 chairs. And uh, we have a, a, a series of uh, meet the Republican receptions. Uh, the first of which happens, in, uh, the first two of which happen this Saturday. So if you're up around the, uh, the uh, Cumberland Library between uh, 11 and 1 p.m., uh, there is uh, the, uh, Cumberland and Lincoln are, uh, are coming together for that. And uh, then uh, South County has one from 2 to 4. And I'm, uh, I'll be down at that one, obviously. That's at the Turtle Soup Restaurant on Ocean Road in Narragansett. If you've ever been there, it's a wonderful place. You just kind of go under the towers and past the Coast Guard House, and it's just down there a ways. And we got the veranda, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some people to talk some politics, but it's going to be a gorgeous day overlooking the water, and, um, and it will remind us all at least what we got to look forward to if we make Rhode Island right again. So I suggest to you that each of you have to figure out something that you can do and that you have to look forward to being part of the public discourse which gets that done. And if you can only put one brick in the wall, that's one less brick that somebody else has to put in. Now, um, one of the things that we all learned in the Tea Party movement is how important it is 
to get government responsive to the people. One of the other things we all learned is how difficult it is to get that to happen. And the reason was that as citizens, we have been grossly out-organized by the money forces who benefit and profit from the current system. And I specifically refer to the, uh, to the service unions who um, for years have, uh, have hired hack politicians on the other side of the aisle uh, because uh, they can easily get them reelected and they'll sit down with them at any negotiation and they'll give away the store each and every time. And the one thing that the unions haven't quite kept up with is the fact that these guys have been lying to them because they haven't been actually putting money away. And that's why the checks are going to bounce. But what we need to do as citizens to take back our government is to break the money chain. The reason that we can't organize is because we got no cash. I got a fundraiser coming up in May, and I'm hoping that I can get 20 or 30 people at 15 bucks a head. Do the math. It's not very much. Um, but we got people, all, you know, we get tens of thousands of workers all across the state who have 15 bucks a week taken out of their paycheck by the state and given directly to the people that have out-organized us. Gee, even I could manage something like that. And so there's the problem we have to do. You've got to break the money chain. And uh, now's the time to do it because we're broke and everybody realizes that some of these contracts are just going to have to change because there's no way out. Um, and uh, we need to uh, get out as individuals and hire legislators who will work for us. Now. The question was asked earlier. You got all of these people who for generations have been taught to just sit around quietly and wait until the government comes and does something for them. Well, what's going to happen when all of a sudden um, it starts to get hungry out and the government doesn't run over with meals on wheels? Well, what's going to happen is people are going to get up off their seats and go do something. One of the problems that we've had that I would submit with the war on poverty for years and years is that we haven't expected very much out of people. And so guess what? Surprise, we haven't gotten anything out of them. If you raise the bar, people will clear it. That's what people do. I submit that one of the things that our omnibus government misses entirely is that its citizens are sentient beings. It misses and overlooks and ignores the fact that we each have individual sovereign rights. And I guess that's the thing that irks me most when I get rolled up into a great big collective with everybody else. You know, you're all fine people, but we all got different fingerprints. And what I will leave you with is this idea. Whatever you do, whichever brick in the wall you decide to make yours and go out and put there, trust the citizens around you. We have gotten away from trusting citizens. The whole concept of small government is based on trusting citizens to do the right thing. So you don't need, you know, bushel baskets full of regulations mm -hmm. to govern every single thing, which is like having no regulation at all, because who could know all that stuff? <laughs> so, folks, we've got to get back uh, to the uh, KISS principle. And the folks in this room are the people that have to take the first steps in that direction. I'm pleased to have been with you for this year. I expect to be with you for years and years ahead because it's not going to be something you can do by just pushing one button. Thank you. Congratulations on your first year. It's just a start. Thank you.